For me, the Ocean Day is every day. It's certainly not just one day of the year. I think um, we all should care about protecting the oceans. Um, they play a really crucial part in, um, in maintaining the climate around the planet. Um, and they harbour amazing biodiversity that you know, we all should be thrilled and interested in conserving for the long term. Biodiversity generally across the world is really important. Um, you know, the world doesn't just belong to us, we have to protect everything there from even creating the, the air we breathe with phytoplankton, photosynthesizing, um, to the joy we get from watching the seals and dolphins play. It's just really important to protect it, especially here where we've got these massive kelp forests which um, you know, store so much carbon and buffer the islands against the really nasty southern swells. So yeah, I think it's, it's really important, especially here. From the very simple reasons that um, they are extraordinary and bring so much to, to our lives in terms of you know, going for um, a, a swim in the sea or walk on the beach through to the very kind of tangible that our oceans provide us the fish we eat. They provide us so many resources, they regulate our climate, they, they provide us with so many kind of services as well that they're almost essential for, for, for human life and therefore protecting them and ensuring those ecosystems can continue to, to thrive and, and do those services that we, we value so much. It's not just for the ocean's sake, it's also for our sake as well. So, The Falklands is, as, as a lot of, as you would know, is an incredible ecosystem, like a, a globally renowned ecosystem. But there are a lot of data deficiencies and things that we just simply don't know. So I would say the best way that we can know how to conserve the ecosystem is by doing more science, knowing more about the ecosystem, which includes knowing about the risks to the ecosystem as well. Studying of the ocean environment is also a way to protect it because when compared to research done in the Northern Hemisphere, there's much less work that's been done um, in the Southern Hemisphere. And so like, there are some species of fish that we don't know where their nursery habitats are. And so if we're able to identify where they spend their early life stages, then we can know, okay, that's an area that we need to protect and preserve as it currently is. I wanted to get to know what these scientists were doing to protect our marine environments, leading me to the lab in the agricultural department where Rianne talked all things zooplankton and how these tiny creatures make a surprisingly large contribution to the Falklands economy. I'm looking at Falkland zooplankton and zooplankton are all the small animals that are floating about in the sea currents and my PhD project is looking at identifying what species of zooplankton there are in the Falkland Islands and how their community composition changes between the seasons because we know that they are a very important part of the Falklands ecosystem but there haven't really been that many studies on them and if you don't know what's going on in the small animals at the bottom of the food chain how can you know how that's going to affect the larger organisms further up. Other studies that have been looking at commercially important fish species, that have been looking at penguins and whales, when they study the diet composition of those organisms, these zooplankton species are coming up in abundance in the stomach contents. So we know that they're a vitally important prey source. Without the coastal environment that is probably acting as a nursery ground for like small fish species and just providing shelter for these smaller organisms without that habitat we probably wouldn't have the fisheries that the Falklands do have here. Protecting the oceans is the bread and butter for all of these scientists whose research spans from the deep depths harbouring enormous whales to the shallow marine environments of starfish and sea lions. Because of this, they seem the best people to ask how we can actually protect our oceans on Oceans Day and every day. I think number one is know what's there to protect. So that is all about the baseline data collection and that's exactly what I'm trying to do. So when we can prove what's there, um, then you know how to protect it and I can pretty much hand that data over to the um, Environment Department and Government and it's going to be open access so people can, can look at that and um, look at things like climate change adaptation um, or how they might respond to other threats as well. So a big one is marine invasives, so something we could do to help that is to do um, more active looking for invasives um, and then maybe try and control them if we do see them.
The purpose of the project that I'm working on is to look at um, understanding a bit more about how likely it is that marine non-native species will be introduced to South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands um, and looking at kind of uh, what factors might increase that risk or reduce that risk um, of them being introduced. But it's one of the kind of you know, few places in the world that is so kind of disconnected from, from human uh, activity and impacts and it's really important to kind of try and maintain that and um, it's just such a beautiful marine ecosystem there. So marine native species can be transported through various ways but one of the main kind of pathways is through ships and boats and vessels um, crossing oceans and sometimes those vessels will accidentally take species with them um, through kind of the species kind of growing on their hull or being carried in their ballast water. Um, so yeah, this project is to kind of get a bit of a better understanding of that, that risk of those species being carried to South Georgia through those pathways um, and look at what could be done perhaps in the future to, to, to mitigate that if needed. So some of the major um, threats to South Georgia is, is climate change in the marine environment and, and warming oceans, but also increasing human activity. So in terms of marine non-native species, both are increasing the risk um, of species being introduced. Since 2017, there has been quite a dramatic increase in um, seal fishery interactions. So that's seals um, directly interacting with fishing operations around the trawl nets. The Falkland Islands being such a wildlife hotspot and having over 50% of the world's South American fur seal population, the conservation uh, impact of, that, of this project is quite apparent. So in 2017, there was over 140 mortalities in one season, so it's quite a lot. And the Falkland Islands Fisheries Department responded really quickly to that. They mandated seal exclusion devices on, on the fishing nets within the Laligo fishing industry. And that actually stops the seals from getting caught in the net. There's an escape hatch where seals can, can exit the nets as well. We're actively engaging with the fisheries department to try and think about first knowledge that we can acquire to be able to understand what will be effective, but also trying to understand whether there's any operational aspects of how commercial fisheries are conducted here, which can be slightly tweaked to, to improve uh, mitigation. Commercial fishing nets are affecting not only the seal population in the Falklands, but whale populations too, as a southern right whale was recently found stranded on Pebble Island with fishing gear around its tail. Cetacean ecologist Caroline Weir attended the stranding and gave us further insight into the other research she is doing on whale populations around the Falklands. It was a young whale and had been entangled for months and months, we think, um, looking at the severity of the injuries. And this kind of chronic entanglement has all kinds of repercussions for whales. It hinders their movement, obviously. It stops them being able to eat properly and migrate and do all the things that a whale does. There's a lot of modern day threats that people don't think of with whales, and in particular, vessel strike, them getting hit by ships. Um, and entanglement in fishing gear is becoming more and more of an issue. And a lot of those entanglements are with fixed fishing gear, so the kind of gill nets that get set on the seabed and pots for lobsters and crabs that get set on the seabed with these ropes that go up to the surface buoy, that's where these animals are getting entangled. And this year was the eighth say well season that we've run um, consecutively, so it's turning into a really nice long-term data set. We had a couple of encounters with 12, 15 whales at the same time, and uh, it's pretty spectacular like that. We also had a few re-sightings of whales, individual whales that we know already from earlier years, so these recaptures really um, tell us that the Falklands is important, that the same whales are coming back year after year and using this place for, uh, for feeding, so it's a really valuable feeding area. To celebrate World Oceans Day this year, Sari held an event to bring together all of those working with oceans in the community, hoping to inform and inspire attendees of all ages to protect our oceans. There were stalls for different scientific research projects from Sari and Falklands Conservation, and the team at Sari even went diving that morning to fill some tanks with all sorts of marine life for an interactive glimpse into the big blue. I think having a day to celebrate something is is great, but why not? It's good to appreciate what the ocean does for us and how much we rely on it, um, especially as an island community.